that's different than anything you've ever seen. So look up. Now let's cut down to the chase. Why plants do a lot of problems? We need to know how we're going to fix the problems at hand and how we're going to get the money to do it. My entire purpose for running for office is to end poverty. That's something that affects every single one of us across the board, no matter who we are. You solve that, and everything else falls into place. And we've got a budget deficit of $25 billion. And we need to know how to fix that, too. Well, I'm here to tell you how. And I'm going to back it up with facts and figures from some of the most respected organizations on the matter, like the United Way, like the National Alliance for Homelessness, like the Northeast Ohio Coalition for the Homeless, like the National Coalition for the Homeless, like the County of Los Angeles. Yes, I'm even going to use the government's own reports to prove that what I'm saying is true. Why not? We paid for it. Now first, according to the 2010 census, there's an official poverty rate of 15.7%. That's 47.8 million people in this country living in poverty or worse. Add to that another 5 million people estimated living homeless on the streets and millions more living in vehicles. A full third of those are veterans, war veterans, many in wheelchairs and without limbs, and the damnedest number of them all. We have a total of 18.9 million empty housing units in this country. You do the math. Did you know that the banks, the very same ones that got a $1.6 trillion bailout, in the most bipartisan fashion I've ever seen in my life. The same ones that purposely trashed our economy and used our homes as casino chips. Then, after getting all their money back and then some, are still foreclosing to this very day, making more and more people homeless. They take over apartment complexes and make paying renters go out on the streets so that they can leave these buildings vacant for years so that they can fall apart and appreciate in value so that they can come back years down the road and buy them up cheap and get these huge subsidies from taxpayers, from the redevelopment agencies so that they can build their self-glorifying museums. And what is our government doing about it? Well, they're complicit. Both the Democratic and Republican parties are aiding and abetting in the theft of our homes and our resources. It is not a bank teller who comes knocking down your door and throwing you out on the street. It's a sheriff, a government employee, who is controlled by the politicians. All the while, they continue to gut our schools and make them nothing more than meat grinders for the military and prison industrial complexes. And one side says there's nothing they
the social advantages to this plan. First, it gives homes to those in need. Then, consider that the money paid for the rents goes directly back into our local economies. And take it a step further. Let's give preference to the small property owner, the one who has four or five units. That way we know that the money will stay local and will help stabilize our middle class. Then there are all the benefits this gives to society as a whole. With people in homes instead of on the streets, it will immediately remove all the blight that we hear talked about, what causes so much of the social tension. It will give us all a reprieve. And consider how much this will reduce our crime rate. When in many of our communities, homelessness and poverty-related incidents consume 80% of our police time and resources. And then, the icing on the cake. This will cost us so much less than keeping people on the streets that we can start seriously talking about a tax cut. It's a plan that works for everyone. So how much does this cost? With approximately 1.25 million homeless people in California at a median rent of say $1,200, it comes up to approximately $18 billion total. Now I can hear you asking already, in this economy, in this recession, with a $25 billion budget gap, where in the world am I going to come up with another $18 billion to house everyone on top of what we already need to cover? Well, the answer can be found in the Homeless Cost Study. The little report everyone keeps ignoring. The one that says that by placing chronically homeless people into permanent supportive housing, it saved the city $20,000 per person per year. Well, that's over and above the cost of housing. Let's think about this. How many homeless people did we say we have? 1.25 million. All right, let's multiply that by $20,000. What do we come up with, anyone? That's right, $25 billion. That's where the money is. You do this, you cover the budget. We solve both problems at the same time. And then we're able to seriously start talking about tax cuts. It's a solution, it's the solution we've been looking for, and it's staring us right in the face. But to get all that, you need to get me elected. I've got to go front. You put me in office, and I'll get this passed. So the question is, do you have my back? I can't hear you. I've got your front. You got my back? Yeah. You got my back? Every single one of us. My website is Mark.